I'm looking here at options for a new base station for a DAISY system. And so here we've got the representation of the power takeoff unit. So you've got a, a circle which is you know, able to rotate uh, looking at the wind wherever it's coming from, so weather cocking there, and as well as that um, azimuth, you've got an elevation tracking on that. So fairly generic, the needs of that. You know, we could build this section out with um, quite a lot of framing. What I want to look at is the mount that this is going to go on. Now, previously, I've either had just a spike in the ground or I've had um, one axle down here that's had the whole lot on. It's not a very good support system, whereas this, with a um, rail on the bottom, either a rail or a stub axle, or, you know, a, a, a pole through the top with um, a bearing on here and something to mount onto that. I, I kind of like that idea in its simplicity, but the fact is it doesn't give you a lot of clearance vertically here, depending on, you know, the uh, the uh, size of the power takeoff that you have and, you know, given how much you need to support in this. I guess this piece would be further out here. This this would lie up out that way. Anyway, the options here, you can see on the left as you're looking from the front into these sections here, you would have the, the different type of rail mounting systems that commonly exist and we, we could get pieces for. The very simplest um, and most likely on a small scale work is this, just a pipe clamp. Now you do get trolleys for that, however, they're not now in use for overhead work in the UK. You can get them from uh, various dealers, you can get them from China and uh, New Zealand, Australia. And uh, they're rated up to, you know, hundreds of kilos. Um, the reason that you don't get them is because they, you know, they look like they could blow apart quite easily. The forces really are trying to wedge this open. It's a strong piece, however, you know, it's set really quite well, but there's a few things you'd have to look out for in maintenance terms in order to make sure that's uh, working well. And that would fit on this circular section. Now, that's fine. It would take, you know, your force that way. You could make a frame that it's it's locked in place. It's not going to change where it is. You might need to, you're obviously going to have to fix this uh, circular section, this rail to the ground. So you're going to need anchoring and uh, such like out of the way of where that runs. So your frame would hold the clamp in place and it would run past it. Uh, maybe you'd want a little guide flange or, you know, just a bead even uh, welded onto your pipe section in order to make sure that that trolley part didn't stray off of course you know didn't didn't wander away whilst also allowing of course the um, elevation changes on, on your power takeoff now this piece is a very con you know normally you have this section pointing straight down and you get these trolleys that uh, go into that and where are they we've got this one yeah, that's all very well and good, but when it comes, I mean, they work really well and, and the inserts are really cheap, but this is almost always vertical. And so when it comes to actually bending it to this, you know, if that's too you know, compound bending on that, it's going to be impossible. You could bend that in one plane, probably still, it would be an awful hassle and guaranteeing that gap. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a very, you, I doubt that's ever going to happen. Um, this is the most likely on a, a larger scale, a standard I-beam, but what's happened, you know, if, because we've had to turn it into this um, section that's looking at holding against, you know, our forces, we're, we're going up at about 45 degrees as we're matching what's going on from the power takeoff. You know, we're wanting um, a, a carriage that really, you know, has, has one part carriage there, one part carriage further around, and either one or two up on the top part as well. And these would have to be linked and, you know, anchored into the ground. So as the forces are going up and out, you know, as we're looking to pull away from, you know, on the, the, the line of that line in the center of this uh, part here, you know, we're looking to pull away from there. Um, th this would be a, a fairly easy section to make this um, T section, I section here. But what you need is to roll two truncated cones. So you've got one um, fairly fairly very steep one there so you know that that's going to take quite a curve to make that you'd cut these curves out or you know c-shaped curves out of a flat sheet of um, metal you'd roll that up in order to make your truncated cone and weld it on the seam there so in between um, where these two meet so you'd weld all along that center line there you'd probably have to do it top and bottom so that's going to be quite tricky in the bottom as well um, 
Yeah, it's more expensive, obviously, than the pipe solution, but certainly in a, a bigger, more reliable system, that's this one is going to be the, the way ahead. Um, yeah, I don't see this this U section one ever working. Um, so it's maybe as well to go straight to that kind of carriage, maybe as well to go, you know, here's the here's the standard solution you get for it, really rock solid, um, you know, that the forces are in line with those, you know, against those axles. You're only ever looking at shear of that uh, axle there. So, yeah, that's that's most likely for, you know, future. Do I, in the meantime, though, build an easy one and get one of those, um, you know, cheap pipe clamps? Or do I get, an, you know, do I have, do I fork out now and build this? Tough call.